was nine, my brother came to me and said, let's build a treehouse. So I said, fine. We conducted our research, which meant watching MacGyver once a week until something wooden appeared. So with that in mind, we went to my father and asked him, will you help us with this? And he said, no, but you can use my tools. So we did. And the treehouse we built actually turned out more like a wooden platform. But it was eight feet up in the air, and we spent every single day that summer luxuriating in our own achievement. Now, six months later, the wind blew that down, smashed it to pieces. It wasn't strong enough to stand up to the west of Ireland weather. But our plan the following year was to turn the remains of that treehouse into a go-kart. And this is us, hard at work. I'm on the left. I've had a haircut since. <laughs> we screwed skateboards to the bottom of it. You can see we've got bike stabilizer wheels on the side, so it doesn't fall over. We were worried about high speeds. And we painted it a very fetching white. And once it was ready, we carried it up to my parents' driveway and got ready to speed. But we hit a snag. The driveway was gravel. Our go-kart weighed half a ton, and we were going nowhere. The driveway wouldn't get paved for another five years. But little did I know at that time that 30 years later, I'd still be trying to work on sustainable transport solutions using the resources that the west of Ireland wind had given us. Ireland's a windy place. We know that from the slanted trees in Connemara. We know it from the uselessness of an umbrella on a night like tonight in Galway. And we also know it from the amount of wind farms that are coming up around the country. And last year, wind farms provided over 40% of Ireland's electricity. That's the second highest figure in the world. New technology, much like the ones I'm showing you on screen, allow bigger, more efficient wind farms to be built in the sea. Even newer technology will build bigger wind farms still, taller than the Eiffel Tower, but floating wind farms. And they'll be positioned in the deep ocean, far off our shores, not overshadowing anyone's house, not obscuring anyone's view. And the wind out there blows constantly. That 40% wind electricity, that displaced hundreds of millions of euros in money that we would otherwise spend on importing fossil fuels and millions of tons of carbon dioxide, the most dangerous greenhouse gas. So, if we in Ireland want to have a renewable energy system, we've got five to ten times the amount of our electricity needs as potential in our oceans. So this sounds great. And this is before we even start talking about solar, tidal, wave, or geothermal energy. Remember this potential. So this sounds like a great way to run our society. We have a fully renewable energy island. But if we think about it for a moment, it's not quite so simple. First of all, electricity is only one-fifth of the energy we use every year. The other 80% is burning fossil fuels to run our vehicles and to heat our homes. So for us in Ireland, the best way for us to decarbonize or green these sectors is to use more electricity in them, because we're good at green electricity in Ireland. And that's starting to happen. Electric vehicles are becoming mainstream consumer products, but they're not being taken up quick enough. New homes have got incredible standards of insulation, and they're warmed by heat pumps that transform renewable energy from the earth or from the air into warmth for our homes. But what about the existing housing stock in Ireland, which is the least energy efficient in all of Europe, the least insulated? What about our diesel-fueled trucks and buses and trains? What about ships? What about airplanes? These are machines that travel such distances and have to overcome huge turnaround times that batteries are not practical for them. We can't electrify everything, at least not directly. So I study hydrogen. What's all this about? Well, if we take electricity from these wind farms that we're good at and from the solar farms that we're going to build here, and we Create, put it into a device called an electrolyzer. We can use electricity to split water, H2O, 
into hydrogen and oxygen. And if we store that hydrogen, we can have a chemical battery that is a reserve of our wind energy, our renewable energy, that can withstand long times and store energy at huge volumes. Now, this is something that batteries have not been able to do yet. Batteries are excellent for storing electricity for short periods and at small scale. And we need both when we have a renewable-powered country. What else can we do with hydrogen? We can bring it to filling stations, and we can use it to fuel buses, trucks, ships, and planes, the kinds of things we can't easily electrify. And when we use hydrogen in these vehicles, the only product is pure water. Furthermore, we can put hydrogen into the existing pipework that brings fossil fuel natural gas to 700,000 homes in Ireland. And we can use this to reach the factories that do the very difficult high temperature processes that are very, very hard to get the fossil fuels out of. When I first heard about hydrogen 20 years ago as an engineering student here at NUI Galway, I was instantly hooked and I needed to know more. But no one in Ireland was working on it at the time. So I packed my bags, I shipped up to Boston, to the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, or MIT, and I got a PhD there on hydrogen technologies. Now I'm back in Galway, where I run the Energy Systems Engineering program in the university, and I get to help shape the new generation of young engineers that are going to be needed to help kick our fossil fuel addiction and really make climate action happen. I also run a research group a team, 14 researchers from all over the world that have come to Galway to help me answer the question, where does hydrogen fit in zero carbon, climate resilient, sustainable societies? We haven't finished working out the answer on this. I think we're going to be working on this for a while, but I'd like to share you some of my thoughts on what a vision for Ireland might be. Far off our shores, we have huge arrays of offshore wind turbines, tidal turbines, and wave energy converters. These, combined with solar panels that are on all of our roofs, provide more than enough electricity for us to, to use. And that's a good thing, too, because we ride and we drive electric scooters, electric bikes, electric cars, electric trams. Our trucks, our intercity trains, are all powered by green hydrogen, produced by this electrolysis process, powered by renewable energy. We have gone from fossil fuels providing 90% of our transport needs to zero. And we've produced cleaner, safer, quieter towns in the process. What about our homes? Well, they're well insulated for a start, better than they are now. And they're warmed mostly by these heat pumps I've told you about. And our schools and hospitals and large buildings and factories have hydrogen piped to them where, they're, where it's burned in zero emissions boilers to run those processes. Hydrogen has also helped solve the problem of data centers consuming precious electricity at periods of peak demand, like we have now. And how does it do this? Well, when we have more hydrogen, when we have more electricity than we need, we can produce hydrogen through electrolysis. We store it in our old gas fields because we no longer extract fossil fuels from them. And we use that hydrogen to run the backup generators at these data centers. And because these data centers serve foreign clients, they are, in effect, exporting green bits and green bytes across the world. So, Ireland has moved from being an importer of 80% of its energy, 90% of which is fossil fuels, at a cost of 5 billion euros a year to becoming a major renewable energy exporter. And we export our renewable energy through subsea cables to Britain and to France, but also on huge ships, which are very similar in design to those that were once planned to bring liquefied natural gas to Ireland. These ships, of course, are powered by hydrogen, as are all the aircraft that use Irish airports fueled by green hydrogen that's produced from Irish renewable energy. So how do we get to there from here? I love this photograph. It was taken 52 years ago of an event 100 kilometers up in the air. 
And it was the instant that this first stage of the Apollo 11 rocket separated just before it fell back to Earth. The first stage is what gave the astronauts their start on the way to the moon. And it was fueled by kerosene, a fossil fuel. The second stage, which took the astronauts to the moon and back, the fuel for that was hydrogen. And you can see that in the picture, the relative cleanliness of the hydrogen flame on the second stage compared to the first stage. I love this picture because it symbolizes the dawning of a new era, one in which we have to do things differently if we want to get to a better future. So how do we get to that better future? Who's going to help us get there? Well, NUI Galway researchers are among those working to get us there. We're working with partners across Europe, in Spain, in Germany, in Scotland, to develop green hydrogen solutions from sources as diverse as wind, solar, even household waste. We're working with energy visionaries right here in Ireland in communities that are geographically remote but rich in renewable resources. Communities like Valencia Island, the Aran Islands, Achill Island, Rathlin Island. These are places that see the potential for hydrogen to transform their communities. We're working in a really exciting project called GenCom, which is looking to turn wasted wind energy from a wind farm in County Antrim to enough hydrogen to run 20 double-decker buses in Belfast. Zero emissions. And the best thing about this project, those buses are designed and built right here on the island of Ireland. NUI Galway researchers and NUI Galway as a whole and Galway can help Ireland become a hub for hydrogen expertise in the world. And this won't just help us in the university, this will make real positive local benefits. The availability of constant green electricity and hydrogen will have a transformative effect and will stimulate new innovative industries that we can't even imagine yet. It'll bring clean tech employers to Ireland in huge numbers. We'll have a workforce in the tens to hundreds of thousands, all working on clean energy. And the best thing about this, the resource will never run out. The opportunities will never run out. The only limitation are our own imagination and ingenuity. 30 years ago, my brother and I failed in our attempt to get our sustainable transport solution going using the raw materials, our smashed treehouse, that the west of Ireland weather had given us. But maybe we were just a few years too early. Maybe the solution to a lot of the problems we're facing here in Ireland and around the world has been right in front of our faces every time we go outside on a windy day. Ireland can and should be the center of hydrogen research, development, and deployment. Let's get the driveway paved and get moving. Thank you.